Because what I really want to uh, advise, your investment goals are important. Yes. And uh, how the components of your investment portfolios, they are the ones that will help you uh, move uh, towards uh, achieving your investment goal. Hi everyone, welcome to IFAS Research Podcast. So today I have a couple of guests with me. So firstly, uh, I have Pan King Wing, Head of Multi-Asset at Fullerton Fund Management. Happy to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. And for those of you who follow IFAS TV, we have Shren from the, uh, from the team. So she needs no introduction, <laughs> familiar figure for many of you. So today we're going to go through the very interesting results that uh, Fullerton Fund Management has uh, recently published in a study that they call Rethinking Investing. Investors' Attitudes and Behaviours in an Evolving Landscape. So let's start firstly uh, with uh, the why behind the study. So why did Fullerton Fund Management decide to do this survey, Peking Wing? We decided to do this survey because we want to take a pulse check on the Singapore investors' uh, mindset today. Mm. So as you know, a lot of things have changed in the past few years. So we have witnessed uh, two wars. We also have uh, interest rates that uh, rose really quickly in a very mm -hmm. short period of time. And we also have a technology uh, disruption uh, in our life, uh, in our workplace and, and everything, almost everything that we do. So all these things have happened in a very short period of time. We think that it is timely right now to do this uh, survey so that we can see whether the attitudes of the Singapore investors have changed uh, over this period of time. Mm. So what we have done is we've surveyed uh, 500 uh, active uh, investors across mm -hmm. the different age groups. We, uh, they have at least three years of investment experience with at least 40K in their investable assets. So the age groups would have uh, included uh, the really young ones to uh, those who are approaching retirements and mm. even uh, some retirees. Ultimately, what we really want to do with this survey is uh, to gain this uh, deeper insight into the uh, investors' uh, psyche so that we have uh, better information mm. and be more targeted uh, in our investment journey together with our partners. Yeah, thanks for sharing all this. I'm assuming that there will be uh, quite a few differences in how Singaporeans from different age groups and generations think when it comes to uh, investing. Uh, we've heard quite a lot of that on IFAS TV for many other topics like uh, relationships, work-life balance, productivity, things like that. But when it comes to investing uh, for this survey, King Wing, what was uh, perhaps one of the key uh, differences you noticed? Yeah, I, I mean, I, firstly, I want to say that uh, I have been an avid uh, watcher of the iFast TV. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I definitely enjoy the banter that uh, John Paul and uh, Shen, <laughs> Shen Lin has, right? So, uh, okay, I'll just say, I'll just start off by saying that there definitely is a difference. What we have noticed is that the younger investors uh, tend to be more risk seeking, whereas the uh, older or more mature the investors, uh, their risk appetite uh, seems to be a little bit more uh, moderate uh, to even low. So that is uh, what we have uh, discovered. The younger investors actually started to take more active risk. They have already mm. re started to rebalance their portfolios towards uh, more risky assets. Mm, okay. Shen, as a <laughs> representative of uh, the younger generation in the Gen Z group, yes. so do you, do you also agree with the, uh, what some of your peers are doing? Basically taking on more risks uh, early yeah. on. Yep. Yeah, but I guess also it depends on who you ask and also maybe the stage of life that we are in. So we can all be Gen Z, but some of us are going through different things. Uh. So I do have a few friends who, like what you mentioned, seem to be taking um, quite a lot of risk. So I would say probably things like crypto. They are quite into cryptocurrencies. Mm. And then, uh, but then there's also the other group of people like mm. myself who are more, I think I would consider myself more of a safe, safer uh, investor. I don't really, um, really dabble too much into the other different asset classes. I stick to, you know, the usual. So I guess in the sense that uh, I don't really explore that much uh, of all these different types of assets, but I do know of a lot of other Gen Z people around my age who do who do that lah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's so, quite yeah. It's quite interesting. Quite interesting. Because, uh, I would like to hear from you as well. For me as well. Yes. Uh, as not as a member of Gen Z, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But for Gen Z, right? Actually, uh, I I I quite agree with what Shren said. So. Uh, I think the majority of people tend to be a bit more like you, uh, at least among the colleagues that I know. So they tend to be a bit more careful or conservative in their investment approach. So when I ask them what they're investing in, so some of, actually, some of them actually tell me that they invest into fixed deposits. So that's actually quite uh, unexpected from my point of view. And there's a smaller group, a minority, who are extremely uh, 
aggressive. So cryptos would be their way of investing. So for someone like me, uh, who uh, I wanted to say who is part of millennials, but no longer. So more of a Gen X. Uh, for me, I would say at this uh, part of my life, I'm probably more of a moderate to higher risk taker. I think I used to be a more aggressive investor when I was uh, younger, probably around your age. And I've been quite aggressive as an investor for quite long, but I've kind of like dialed down my uh, risk uh, appetite uh, in more recent years. Uh, I don't know whether it's a, it has to do with the age uh, thing, but uh, I probably am closer to balance uh, and to moderately aggressive uh, okay. in terms of my investment uh, approach. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's that's very interesting because uh, let me share a bit of the, the findings from the survey. Mm. One of the very first questions is, of course, to start with asking uh, what kind of an investor are you? So mm. are you a low risk taker, a, a moderate risk taker or a high risk taker? So the survey uh, does indicate that the majority of uh, Singaporeans tends to be low to me, uh, moderate risk takers. Very, very small percentage, about 4% uh, of those are surveyed, uh, indicates that they are high risk taker. So. Well, I guess we're very much uh, in uh, the uh, the bulk of the herd. The mm. herd, you mm. get what I mean. So we're not that different from the rest of, of <laughs> our fellow Singaporeans. Yes, but you know, when it comes to the younger investors, right? Do you find that uh, uh, they are actually not overly exposed to, let's say, some of these uh, uh, riskier uh, kind of investments like cryptocurrencies? Mm. Yeah, is that something that you notice as well? Yes, the, that one's. This is a actually a very interesting uh, phenomenon that uh, we observe as well. Cryptocurrencies, the rise of cryptocurrencies, has definitely captured the imagination, mm. especially uh, among the younger cohort. So the the survey does uh, tell us that mm. the younger investors, they really like uh, non-traditional uh, assets. So non-traditional assets we include the cryptocurrencies, but that's not all. Mm. So they would also include like uh, private assets, private equities, uh, private uh, credit, and also commodities. Non-traditional assets are fair and good. They are definitely uh, interesting mm. uh, investment asset classes on their own. But I would actually do caution that uh, for the, uh, the our younger uh, fellow Singaporeans, maybe it's a good idea to really understand what risk they're taking in this and non-traditional assets to really understand them and not just to follow any fad because their friends are doing. Your investment goals are important yes. and uh, how the components of your investment portfolios, they are the ones that will help you uh, move uh, towards uh, achieving your investment goal. Yeah. One, one, I would say, okay, maybe, maybe at this point in time, right? Because yeah. of where I am, uh, and also one of the very uh, relevant questions uh, in the survey is to ask uh, people, what your investment goals are. Yes. So could I could I do this uh, <laughs> do this question this time uh, and ask uh, Jean Paul sure. as well as Shen, what is your top investment goal? Yeah, I think for me, uh, investment goal would be to have a financially f a free kind of a life, essentially financial freedom, meaning that uh, I don't have to worry about having to pay for my expenses, uh, because I think uh, for me, I'm a bit of a a part of a sandwich uh, generation, meaning that I have to worry about uh, the, the the money and wealth part for, for my children mm -hmm. uh, and also my parents. So, uh, and of course myself and my, my wife. So uh, I think uh, financial freedom, uh, yeah, would, would capture what I have in mind. And I guess to achieve that is growing assets over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely won't be putting a lot or the majority of my money in uh, some of the alternative investments that I think some of the Gen Z's uh, shared in your survey. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure whether Shen thinks the same way. Mm. Uh, actually, I'm very different from you. So he listed a lot of uh, people that he have to look after, like your yeah. family, and you don't have to look kids, after anybody, yeah. right? <laughs> Except for yourself. <laughs> so I'm lucky in the sense that I don't have, uh, I don't have to, I'm not really supporting anybody else maybe aside from my parents later on but then uh, very different from him in the sense that mine feels a bit more short term so mm. for myself right I'm looking at maybe having enough money for my BTO mm. for my house so it's really short term goals I don't actually think so far ahead like oh I want to achieve financial freedom by a certain age it's, mm. I, I just want to settle my finances uh, in the short term first before mm -hmm. I even want to think about the longer term I'm not very sure if that's what you observed 
from your survey, but right. uh, that's mm. kind of like my perspective at this point in time. Okay, yeah. okay, that's that's really interesting, right? So I, I definitely can see the the burden on uh, John Paul's uh, shoulders <laughs> yeah. and the uh, aspiration of the future uh, on uh, Shen's uh, shoulders, right? So, so interesting. I, I, at this point in time, uh, maybe let me uh, bring up uh, infographics. Mm. Uh, um, the top three investment goals uh, from the survey: seventy percent says they want to invest for retirement. Sixty-seven percent says that they want to build wealth over time. I think that is mm. exactly what uh, Jean Paul's yeah. uh, objective is. And 60% says they want to create a regular income stream. And I guess that's the importance of actually uh, having the goals. Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're investing for the purpose of achieving, you know, this 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 goal of ours, right? And it's a very personal goal, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as we can see, very different for yeah. Shen and me. Uh, but how is, uh, uh, the, how is this result that you notice different from the past? Yes, yeah. I, I think ex this is exactly spot on. The uh, big reason why we do this uh, survey is really tr uh, try to figure out has act has investment attitudes really changed uh, over time? And I would say that there is, there is a change. One big difference uh, is really uh, that we have observed, not, not so much in the goals, but in the approach uh, towards uh, investment objectives. In the past, uh, Singaporeans uh, tend mm. to believe that owning a house and uh, contributing to your CPF is enough for retirement. Mm. But in, that was uh, in the past. Right now, 73% uh, of the correspondents actually say uh, that is not enough. 68% uh, says that uh, there are actually more types of investments out there. They are more interesting and attractive and worth uh, looking at. So the investor mindset has definitely changed. It's no longer about owning a house. Mm. It's no longer about uh, just CPF. It's actually about uh, uh, what are the investment opportunities uh, out there for them to actually take a look and consider uh, for their retirement goals. I think for you, Shen, do you, do you find that, uh, that it's kind of aligned? So owning a home, it's something that... Uh I mean, it's still important, right? It's still important. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, I have something uh, interesting that I found out from my friends. Okay, mm. so I did bring this survey to them just okay. so mm. that to get their opinions, you know, because uh, for myself, I'm a little bit different because like, I'm preparing for B2 and all, but I have friends who are not, so mm. they are a bit more, you know, free in terms of how they want to plan their finances. And they raised quite an interesting point on the owning a home and contributing to CPF are no longer enough to depend on for retirement. So what they said was actually they feel that uh, it's it actually enough, but mm. then because the definition of what is enough has changed over time. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so now it, it's actually enough, but then because now we expect more things, maybe we want to be able to afford this, but then at the same time also be able to do other things mm. with the money. So then it becomes not enough mm. because there's a lot of other things that we want to achieve aside from having house and, you know, planning for retirement mm. afterwards. There's a lot of other things that we want to do. So the definition of enough has changed over yeah, yeah, yeah. the past few years. Okay. That's a yeah. very good point. It's actually, it's not that uh, owning a house is a, uh, has been deprioritized. Yes. Yeah. It's more like the, <laughs> there are many, so many other things that uh, fill up the jar as well, exactly. right? So there are a lot more things, I guess, that the, the younger uh, generation of Singaporeans aspire to achieve la, with, with that money, right? Uh, yeah, and yeah, that freedom. yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I think we, we talked quite a bit about, let's say, the differences across uh, uh, generations of Singaporeans. But maybe in uh, in this study, uh, Kim Wing, did you notice as well that there was perhaps some similarities in terms of the preferences for certain investments, irrespective mm -hmm. of age groups? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a very good question. Uh, irrespective of age group, right? So... There is, uh, in the current environment, what we have observed uh, for those in their 20s all the way to those in their 60s, right? Fixed deposits and government mm. bonds are mm. the top uh, investment choices yeah. uh, across the board. Uh, this is where this infographics is quite interesting. It shows the top five uh, preferred assets to invest in according to age group. Mm. Uh, so everyone is uh, allowed to choose more than one. That's why you see that they don't sum up to 100%. Okay. But it's actually very telling. Uh, Across the board, 80% of the, all the correspondents uh, actually say that uh, they prefer fixed deposits. Now, this is uh, very interesting to me because, uh, or, or rather not so unintuitive because interest rates right now are rather high. Mm, mm. So I would say that uh, compared to maybe, inflation last year was very high, but it has come off. Yes. So cash rate right now is actually a little bit higher than inflation. It's almost a no-brainer to actually park your cash uh, into 
fixed deposits, yeah. even T-bills, or cash funds and money market funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, that's probably one of the similarity, like you said, uh, from the survey in terms of uh, Singaporeans all wanting to go for the risk-free assets, right? Because the return is quite decent. Um, how about the differences uh, in terms of uh, what uh, the Singaporeans in the survey want to invest into? Mm. Yeah. Mm. The differences, yeah. I mean, uh, we talk about similarities. Uh, the truth is, uh, even among the different uh, age group, we do sense uh, underlying uh, mm. difference. So the younger generations tend to prefer global equities, more developed uh, equities, or they're more, more the risk takers. Whereas uh, for the older age group, interestingly, uh, their top uh, choice of investments uh, hovers around the safer assets like uh, annuities. Yeah. But among the older cohort, uh, I would also say that uh, there is this uh, familiarity bias. Mm. They also prefer uh, Singapore assets. Yeah. Singapore assets like either Singapore equities or yes. Singapore REITs. So this uh, difference uh, do tell us that there is a really a generation gap. And uh, I'm just wondering, like, uh, you know, Jean-Paul, do you like uh, Singapore assets? And sure. Yeah. Sharon, do you yeah. prefer uh, global equities? Uh, I, I feel quite young from sharing this because right. actually I don't have a habit of oh, putting right. a lot of my wealth into Singapore assets only <laughs> or not even the majority of my investments would be in Singapore assets or yeah, or, or stocks or REITs. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, uh, the assumption, I think. Uh, and also supported by your studies yes. uh, results, right? Uh, I would say that actually, uh, maybe because of the nature of my work, so actually having a more global portfolio, so even investing into uh, overseas uh, markets or uh, funds and so on, uh, uh, has been actually actually quite common for me for the last 20 years. Yeah. So uh, so maybe it's a global mindset they have developed that helps you to look at outside of the Yes, Singapore. correct. Yes, that's okay, right. Okay. But I, I do understand what this result is pointing to from th that observation uh, you shared because uh, when I do meet some of our investors, uh, those who are probably uh, in their 50s uh, and above, then they would tend to ask more about uh, your SGX listed stocks mm -hmm. and uh, and also things like your REITs. Yeah, so I think uh, that is perhaps uh, yeah uh, supported uh, by your observation. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. How about you, Shen? Oh, uh, you are right to say that I prefer you know I prefer global stocks and all. Um, but I thought maybe one of the reasons why there's a there's this difference is also perhaps the level of understanding across the different generations. So maybe like what you mentioned, mm. the older generation might be more familiar with Singapore stocks mm. because that's what they have been exposed to for the longest time. But then for the younger generation with the internet and everything, and we also have more access to overseas markets. So in that sense, we have um, a lot of this information that's just at our fingertips. Mm. We are able to easily understand what we are trying to yeah. invest into. Yeah. So that's why most of us would say that we want to go global yeah. but then um, for the others they because they want to stick with what they are familiar with that's why they prefer to stick to Singapore yeah yeah and then also my a few of my friends that I've talked to also mentioned that they feel Singapore is boring uh. yeah <laughs> so they feel that it's too boring nothing happens yeah quote from my friend nothing ever happens here so he rather go and invest in you know the global stocks or global markets because it's more exciting there yeah yeah i also add that it's an additional finding mm. uh, from our survey right that actually tells us the the role of uh, digital platforms and you guess what uh, uh various uh, media yeah. uh, kind of uh, apps that's come out i, I yeah. guess uh, ifast uh, tv is probably one of them <laughs> it actually helps uh, people to uh, to open doors uh, to a uh, different way of uh, thinking yeah. so uh so maybe that has uh, if you have handphone if you're always on your handphone and if you're interested in yeah. investments you can just click on some apps it gives you some content it actually tells you uh the, the what is out there and but you know with all these results uh uh, how does that actually change maybe, you know, uh, your perspective on the future investment strategies mm -hmm. at Fullerton uh, Fund Management? Yeah, I would say that uh, with uh, this results, it doesn't really change uh, what we, mm. our investment strategies per se, because our investment strategy is more predicated on the markets rather than the, what the, the investor sentiments are. are. Mm. But what I would say is uh, in terms of uh, new uh, solutions and uh, new products, this will have an impact uh, to tell us uh, where we can uh, position uh, mm. ourselves because ultimately we want to be a trusted uh, investment partner with uh, the end investors 
uh, to partner alongside them in mm. their investment journey. So providing the right mix of uh, uh, investment solutions is important to mm. us. Yeah. So we're more coming from that angle. At Fullerton, we do have a, a large uh, 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 suite of uh, investment solutions available, uh, all the way from uh, cash, mm. uh, cash funds to uh, equity funds, both global as well as uh, Asian equity funds, to uh, multi-asset uh, solutions, a mixture of uh, equities and bonds in uh, various uh, different combinations to cater for the different uh, uh, risk profile of uh, people along the risk spectrum, and even uh, private uh, assets. And giving based on what uh, you expect from uh, you know how global markets will be performing, mm. let's say in the uh, in the next one year uh, in future, right? So, what would uh, your kind of uh, best investment ideas be? I would say that uh, right now, uh, as we have seen, right, cash uh, is still king. Uh, I mean, the central banks over the world have not uh, started uh, cutting interest rates yet. And uh, cash, uh, even though inflation has fallen, now cash yield is actually a little bit uh, higher than mm. uh, w- what we're experiencing in yeah. inflation. But that is uh, never really going to stay like that forever. Mm. So I do expect that uh, these uh, holdings in cash, right, uh, it should uh, start to find a home in uh, higher returns assets. Now, this is where as a as head of a multi-asset at Fullerton, this is, this is where I'm most concerned. I'm most concerned about the right mix of uh, investors' uh, portfolio to help them achieve their mm. investment goals. So from this uh, uh, respect, right, uh, having f- most of your assets in cash, is it really the best way to meet your investment goals? I would say not really. Mm. Most people probably need a bit of a higher returns compared to cash mm. in order to meet their investment goals. If you want to plan for your own retirement, you want to care for your parents and also take care of your children's education. Yes. Joyful, I'm talking yes. about you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you definitely need a bit of a higher re- returns uh, yeah. because uh, a lot of uh, these things do require great costs. So Fullerton's house view is that we are positive mm. on risk assets right now. We've seen that uh, shift uh, uh, that's happening in yeah. the uh, env- uh, global em- environment yeah. and we prefer growth uh, mm. assets right now. Mm. So having the right mix of the assets, uh, I think it's important at this point in time yeah. to consider that, to reconsider that, uh, to see whether your portfolio mix is right for you to meet your investment uh, goals. Yeah, okay, mm. yeah. Thanks so much, uh, King Wing. I think that was a great way to wrap up the, uh, you know, this interview because I think uh, it's good to hear what maybe we should be considering and uh, investing into. Mm-hmm. I think diversification is one key point as mm-hmm. well. Uh, not having too much into certain asset classes, especially for younger investors who may be just into, let's say, cryptos, right? Uh, and also, of course, uh, hopefully listening to uh, more podcasts like iFast Research and having you know partners like uh, King Wing himself, uh, that would also add value to our uh, investors and viewers. Uh, as opposed to hearing things from just roaring kitties or whatnot. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. So with that, uh, thank you so much, King Wing and Shen. Yeah, thank and you. Uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch for the next uh, episode of uh, iFast Research. Thank you. Thank you very much. I must say that I do enjoy watching some of your more lighthearted uh, videos. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs>